There is nothing, and I mean nothing, I like better than talking politics with Dick Brennan. Yes, he's a big time anchor here, but he's also a big time political junkie. And in a week when Tom Swazi won back his seat in Congress, well, we just got to talk, talk about, about it. it. Of course, my Tom friend. Swazi won, and you and I had talked about the fact that we didn't think he was going to originally. Yeah, we were really thinking that perhaps this was going to be an upset again, if you call it an upset. But what's fascinating about this race is now you hear everyone saying, wow, the Democrats, they've got an opening. And maybe they do. But think about it. The Republicans ran a woman that virtually nobody knew against a guy who everybody's known for 30 years, okay? And he's not the kind of guy that's going to really, like... But she checked all these boxes. She checked all the boxes except the one says you got to get out and talk and, and, and campaign. That's kind of a problem. Yeah, and then she didn't campaign, she didn't talk, and she didn't want to talk to reporters. She didn't want to talk to reporters. And let's face it, part of the job, it's not, you know... We, we're not at the point yet where you could just keep putting commercials on and on and on, and people are going to buy commercials because I think the viewer is getting a little savvier now that they say, hey, maybe when Mozzie has a commercial and Dick Brennan's in it, which I was, strangely enough, <laughs> that he really has nothing to do with this. But, but you know what was really interesting? Uh, one of our reporters, Carolyn Gossop, did a live shot where she held in her hand one family that got 18 mailers in their mailbox. I saw that, 18 mailers. So the, the amount of money is being poured in, and we're hearing from um, Mike Johnson, the, the, the speaker, who was saying, hey, you know, they spent 20 million and we spent 10 or something like that. But who are you kidding, guys? We know on our air that every other commercial was either Swazi or Mozzie. So at some point, I think it's a commercial saturation. The big question is, what happens in the fall? Now, as I see well, it... Well, I was going to ask you that oh, question. I'm going to let her talk, really? Let me, it's her let show. Me, let me at least ask a question, <laughs> then you course. can talk. Do you think that she's on the ballot, that she runs again, or do they come up with another person? Remember, there was a police officer, a former police officer, a sergeant, who wanted to run, and, you know, he didn't check as many boxes as she did, right. so they ran him. Do you think he's got a chance? Uh, absolutely. This is a district that it's... Winnable, we just saw it. A Republican can win it, a Democratic win, can win it. And, but well, the Democrats have to learn about this for all these other races, including the five or six in New York that went Republican, okay? That guess what? You gotta run a candidate and someone who could speak. Now, here's a good example. Mike Lawler, you know him, I know him, up in Rockland County, okay? He ran, strangely, he won't like me saying this, but him and Swazi are sort of similar, flip sides of the same. Because they're moderates. Moderates, exactly. It's you a know, terrible word to many Democrats. Isn't it amazing? But here's the deal. I did an interview with uh, two political experts, and you know what they said? Swazi's candidacy is an absolute example where you, you have to run a moderate. And that if Democrats in New York want to take back these Republican seats, run a moderate, not the left of center progressives they've been running. Well, look... My opinion of these districts that we're talking about, and you know that district on Long Island and Queens, we both know it very well. <laughs> Good luck. I, I heard you know, Trump was saying they should run a MAGA candidate. Someone was saying Swazi needs to be more progressive. That's funny. That, you know, I, go look for all the big le far left and far right in that district. You're not going to find them. But you're not going to find them in the 17 other districts across the country or 19 other districts across the country that are having suburban voters. They have Democrats. They have Republicans. And, oh, gee, remember like 20, 30 years ago we used to say, maybe I could be a little more in the middle and I might attract people? Well, I think what has happened is on a national level, not just in politics, but on news, you know, whether it's Fox, MSNBC, that we think that everybody has to be the Hatfields and the McCoys. No, you can be down the middle and get elected. Tom Swasey proves it. I think Mike Lawler proves it. But let's see what they're going to do in November. Well, you know what's really interesting about the Mike Lawler race? Mike Lawler, um, as we know, represents upstate. But he had 70,000 more Democrats in his district, and he still won. Why? Because he ran as a moderate, a moderate Republican, but he ran as a moderate. But here's the thing about uh, Mike Lawler, which is funny. Um, this week, I watched him do an interview, and if you think that the Republicans are running away from the migrant issue because of Swazi's victory, well, the, the interviewer just kept asking a question, how's the weather today? He said, migrants. <laughs> he just said it over and over and over again, because clearly they think it's a winning issue. And in the Rockland district, it may very well be. But that's going to be the key. Can you be a genuine candidate that people trust, but also do you have a message that doesn't necessarily go to the extremes? We don't have a real extremists in our area here, in all these districts. They're all very yeah, moderate Take a look at all the, many of the Democratic candidates. They were running left of center, and that's why Republicans won. That's what happened two years ago. And now the question is, how do you moderate that, literally, moderated. And how do you find the candidates willing to be in the middle? Well, there's the key. There's the key. Now, I think Lawler and Swazi have proven, and you know, that nothing sells like something that just sold. 
uh, that the, this is a winning way. Remember, we spoke about this, well, probably every day, but a week or two ago on the air, we talked about the issue of abortion. We talked about, you know, Dobbs and the Supreme Court and saying, will this still impact the, the women in the suburbs and men in the suburbs too? Men have these opinions on abortion too. And I think this might be an, an issue that sort of flew under the radar but may have impacted the Swazi race. So here's the, another question. I'm gonna. This, what, where do you see how I get into oh, this? Oh, I can't wait. So, oh boy, here we go. So in this race, neither candidate had brought in the presidential contenders. Swazi didn't want Biden. Mazi didn't want Trump. So some people would say that maybe some the, the President Biden might be um, helped if he could get. You ready for this? Taylor Swift to urge young people to vote and maybe she would bring people to vote and that maybe she would help President Biden by doing that. She didn't endorse Biden the last time. Right. Was that five minutes and we got to Taylor Swift? That was pretty good. No, no, because I, <laughs> <was really good. laughs> I didn't I mean, want to miss it. We didn't waste any time to get to the most important person in the world and she really is. But we laugh about Taylor Swift, but let's not. She has an impact. I have to tell you, um, couple, last summer there was a um, a concert, Taylor Swift concert. Someone in the newsroom thought this would be funny. Let's send Dick Brennan to the Taylor Swift concert. And they did. It was really a pre concert. And you had a great time. I had a great time, but I'll tell you, I was looking and learning and saying, who's here? And the people were coming up to me and they're like, some of them were my age saying, what are you doing here, pal? This isn't your story, your politics. And, um, but what I got from these people were, there is a genuine universal love on both sides. She, so she, she sang could country. Get people to vote. Right. Forget about endorsing Biden. That would just be a, a mistake, in my opinion, because then it would be, once again, the Hatfields and the McCoys. Instead, just say, get out to vote. How many of those voters would be Democrats? I suspect more. Well, in New York, anyway. In New York, in, in these areas. So it could be something great for Biden. And it could be a big mistake if the Republicans think they can start picking on Taylor Swift, because this woman, and she is really great in a lot of ways. She worked in a charity that I was involved in, did all the stuff behind the scenes. So she's a genuinely nice person. But let's see if it works in politics. So here's another question. Tom Swazi is going to Washington. Is he going to make a difference? Is well, he going to change things? Well, his point was, don't send Mozzie there because she's just going to give you what they already have down there. He's saying, um, Swazi was saying, I got to get on these progressives and tell them, you know, or at least try to influence them. One person isn't going to change things, but how fascinating now. Yeah, We're, but they changed the margin. You well, know? that's what I mean. We're getting to the point where just a couple either way, I think it's two, as the Times said this week, um, two would make a difference. So literally then weddings, funerals, missing a flight is going to matter when it comes to votes. And you know these house... Or, or Scalise getting cancer treatment. Or something like that, something very serious. So yes, this margin means everything. We just saw it a couple of weeks ago. The first Mayorkas vote was voted down. The second Mayorkas vote with uh, two one more... Vote. Yeah, one, one by one vote because two more people showed up. And yes, going into November, what is this going to mean if the Democrats are only two votes away from recapturing the House, or two or four? So I'm going to ask you to make a bet. Democrats want to take back some of the congressional seats that were flipped to the Republican column two years ago. What chance do they have? Oh, I think they have a huge chance because I think those seats, listen, so much of it was right here in New York and it's all the seats we were just talking about and we know they're purple districts. And if you get the right candidate, and remember folks, a message, not just a message, a bumper sticker on television, a real message. Because I know, Marsha, that everybody thinks that politics, the old story was politics is local, Tip O'Neill. but. Now, everybody runs national politics. But in this case, in New York, the migrant issue is a local issue. We know that. It's going to affect everything. It's not just affecting Queens. It's affecting Nassau because those people come into the city. And they watch our news. So that's the deal. So we're going to have to end this right now, unfortunately. It went like a... Like Wait, that? we didn't get to more. I want to talk more about Taylor Swift, though. Okay, I thought we could fine. get some more. All right, well, we're going to, well, next time. Oh, she gets the we'll, last we'll word here. We'll have to here. leave it for it now, me. but we'll be right back.